I'm Lucy Shaw and this is The Sewing Room, which is the headquarters of the Guild of St Clair, which I set up about 10 years ago with my local friends to support priests celebrating the traditional mass by mending and making their vestments. Here I'm looking at how to patch a threadbare vestment and in this case I have the shoulder of a uh, violet dalmatic, very threadbare indeed, partly because this is on the fold line. This is a very common way that vestments tend to go. There are different ways of dealing with this kind of hole, but one that's as bad as this and as vulnerable as this as it's on the fold line, the best way is to put a brazen patch over it. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've been quite lucky. This um, isn't a, a particularly good match for the pattern, but the colour's quite good. When you're measuring for your patch, be generous. Obviously, it's not just the hole, but the area around it is weak. So I'm going to allow two inches for the actual patch plus a quarter of an inch seam allowance on either side. So two and a half inches. And the ends of the patch, I'm actually going to tuck them underneath the braid. So this is going to look quite neat but it's also going to lie very flat. So here's the patch with the seam allowance pressed in underneath. But there's no need to press in a seam allowance for the ends because they'll lie flat underneath the braid. So this is Bondaweb, which is a fusible interfacing. It's glue on both sides. So I'm going to take some Bondaweb, which I've cut to fit the patch without the seam allowance. And I'm going to press it with a hot iron, paper side upwards, onto the patch. Now this iron is extremely hot. I wouldn't want to use Bondaweb on a really precious vestment. It's a great stabiliser, but it's not heirloom standard. So this is now glued to the patch. And as well as helping it stick down, it's also going to stiffen it. When I'm ready to stitch it down, I'm going to peel off the paper backing, which will re reveal the glue layer underneath, which you can see there. So I'm going to position that over my patch, my disintegrating patch. I'm going to have to unpick the braid at either end in order to enable the patch to lie flat. I have to be a bit careful at this point because the silk is quite fragile and I don't want to find myself accidentally shredding the main fabric any more than I have to. It's always at this point that you find out more about how the vestment was made. There. Now when I'm happy with the position of my I'm going to use the iron to press this down. If you misjudge this and iron it in slightly the wrong place, you can rip it off and repress it, but the glue doesn't hold quite as strongly the second time. And it may leave marks as well, so that would be annoying if you had to get it cleaned. There, so this is a sort of more effective than tacking in that it holds the patch very securely but it is also strengthening it so it's, it's going to make it harder for this patch to wear through because of the glue inside but as I say not an heirloom technique. So having got that in place you then need to stitch everything back down again. So we're going to use a slip stitch to sew the patch in place. on and because it's a little bit fiddly I'm going to actually cast on on top and it should be invisible because what we're aiming for here is an unbroken line of stitching that will simulate the machine stitching 
that was there before. So I'm just putting some stitches on top of each other to start with. And once I've done that, I can again cut the knot off. You can find it. And then start stitching. So this is a straightforward back stitch that I'm going to do here, not a slip stitch. So I'm taking the needle back and then going underneath. I'm trying to catch any interlining layers I can find under there without going through the lining to make it as strong as possible. Coming out beyond my first stitch and then going back to the stitch I've made first. Again, looping underneath through as many layers as possible. And then coming out. Going back again. I'm trying to follow the line on the braid. You can see now the threads where I started. I'm going to overlap them a little bit. These are the original threads. And then tie off. And then I'm going to cast off these threads as well, the machine threads. Having secured the top machine thread, the bobbin thread will be fairly safe without the holding stitches. And as it's quite short, I'm just going to pull it inside and cut it off. So this is a straightforward slip stitch that I'm going to do here. So there you are, one perfectly patched shoulder. Should stand up to quite a bit more wear before we have to make another one. <laughs>